Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to uh, Live at the Whiskey Lounge. We have a slightly different setup this evening. First of all, thank you all for coming. It's so great to see uh, a couple of familiar faces and some faces I haven't seen before. My name is Steve Rashid, and I am your host for the evening. I uh, began this series. This is actually, I did the math. Uh, I'll give you a couple statistics. This is our 30th show here. We've been doing this since March, every Thursday. And as of last week, we've had over 1,000 people through here watching these shows. So how about that? Isn't that great? So, and you, we count you uh, happily among those, those valuable numbers for us. So thank you so much for coming out and supporting live music here in Evanston. Um, this is, uh, as I say, a weekly series. We do this as a, uh, the idea is kind of small group jazz. This is actually the biggest ensemble we ever have here, a quartet. Usually we're duets and trios. I think of it as uh, small music, but big ideas. Um, I like the idea of uh, small ensembles. You really get to hear that interaction, that musical conversation between just a handful of players. And uh, this evening I'm particularly thrilled that we're gonna have uh, kind of a subgroup of the Fat Babies here. I don't, if you're familiar with this group, and perhaps you are, they're well known in Chicago. There's a, it's a seven piece group. They play regularly at the Green Mill in a place called the Honky Tonk Barbecue down in uh, Pilsen. And uh, we are thrilled they're bringing a subgroup of the group here this evening. Um, and uh, this is all music of the 20s and 30s. They're, they'll tell you about it. And I'll come back up a little later. We'll do a little, uh, a little talk with them so that, uh, and if you have any questions for them, you're welcome to ask as well. Um, I'll give you, you see these little cards on your table. I'm gonna give you just two, two quick little things to think about as you're sitting here listening. Please take these cards with you. They are, uh, just give you the, the rundown of the, the weeks to come. Um, this, uh, the series, or this card only goes through October, but the series is going on indefinitely. So um, every week I put these out. At the beginning of every month, I put a new card out. Um, my email address is on the back. Uh, if you would like to get a little reminder about what's coming up each week, I promise you I send you one email a week, no more. I do not spam you. I don't share your thing. You'd share your email address. It, your email, uh, the email comes directly from me. Uh, and uh, it will tell you, um, give you a, an update of what's coming up in the week to come. And usually something you can click on that you can hear a little bit about what the upcoming act is. So uh, um, if you feel inclined, uh, so inclined, uh, shoot me an email and just say sign me up and I'll put you on the list and you'll get a little weekly reminder. Um, uh, you see a lot of microphones and, uh, and these little guys here, these are cameras and microphones here. We do a live recording of every show and that's my uh, sort of gracious way of asking your uh, uh, your kindness when you speak to each other, please uh, keep it a, at a lower volume because uh, we are recording e each and every show. It's done for archival purposes. It's made available to the to musicians if they so choose. And with the cameras, we do a live streaming. So we hope that you're here every week. If you're not uh, able to come some week, uh, please feel free to tune in online and you can watch the, the shows live from wherever you are, your mobile device or your computer. Again, if you're on the email list, you get a little update as to how to do that each week. Uh, that's about it. Uh, you'll see the acts coming up. Uh, next week is a great Fred Simon. We're going from the 1920s right to the 21st century. Fred Simon is a really well-known uh, piano player here in Evanston, and he is actually going to be here with a bass player he met on Facebook that he's never m met in person. So this is a bass player. This guy's played with everybody, and but not with Fred. So they're going to be meeting here and playing here together for the first time. So we're going from something literally almost 100 years ago, to something that could only happen today. Um, that's next week, uh, and, uh, and on and on. So you take these cards again, and um, the Fat Babies. Man, I, uh, I, I uh, became a musician because I first heard the music of Louis Armstrong when I was a kid, and that flipped a switch for me and made me realize that I needed to, I needed to make this my life. And I've never looked back, and uh, in hearing Louis Armstrong, I, I then started tracing his history back until I was listening to the music he made in the 1920s. And um, first time I heard these guys was on the radio, and I literally thought I was listening to a very well-preserved uh, old record. I, it was so authentic. I thought this is impossible that this is uh, that this is somebody now. <clears throat> and I was so thrilled that a, these were young guys playing this music today, and b, they were right here in Chicago. And so we are very lucky to have them, and I'm thrilled to introduce them. Um, we'll talk to more with them later, but please welcome the Fat Babies with Paula Saro. Secret. Yeah. 
Just nice and easy. Yeah, just nice and easy. Sounds great. I'll give you a little. Everybody, I just wanted to take a chance to introduce the guys in the band here. Over on the drums, we've got Alex Hall. On the bass, we've got Bo Sample. He's the leader of the Fat Babies. <laughs> That's true. And on uh, reeds up here, saxophone, clarinet, John Otto. And I'm little old Policero. And this tune's called Sugar. Thank you very much, Sugar. <laughs> 135. All right, we're going to follow this one up. This is a tune recorded by Fats Waller, 1935. It was not written by Fats Waller, but it's one he's remembered for because it was in a movie called The King of Burlesque. I actually remember it. It was hard to find. I had to search around and find this film on eBay. I finally found it. And there I got to see Fats, you know. And it's um, not overdubbed in it or anything like that. He's actually, actually playing, you know. A lot of the movies, they would record the music first, and then they'd bring in. Fats did this in the 40s, by the way. And then they'd bring Fats in, and he'd, he'd mime to the keyboard. They'd just play the record, and then he'd, he'd fake it. I've got about three or four films like that. But this one, hooray, hooray, uh, no, 
yeah, the burlesque thing. Hooray for burlesque, I think is the name of it. You can tell he's actually playing. Anyway, this is called I've Got My Fingers Crossed. <clears throat>
do uh, 100. Yeah. Got to get this. <clears throat> oh. Lost my beer. Oh, there it is. It was a scary moment. <laughs> That's a good title. Yeah. <laughs> What's a scary, scary moment? Good title for a tune. I got to write one. Um, this kind of piano, by the way, for those who are interested, this is called stride piano. That's what Fats Waller played. I do a lot of Fats's tunes. Well, he wrote so many. He wrote, well, more than 500 tunes anyway that have been uh, accounted for. And um, the stride piano was a had, of course, what's commonly called the ragtime bass. <laughs> Pumping away down there, and of course, nice swing and swing figures in the right hand. James P. Johnson's teacher was, oh, I'm sorry, Fats Waller's teacher was a man named James P. Johnson, who was about 10 years older than, than Fats, and in the jazz world of the 20s, that was a lot. That was, he, James P. was the old man, you know, and Fats was just a kid, about 18, when he started learning how to play this stride piano style. So I'm going to do, this is one of James P. Johnson's songs written 1929. And um, it turned out that uh, Fats actually had a bigger hit with it, <laughs> which is the, the student went on to become much more famous than the teacher in this case. But James P. was a superior pianist. He was great. This is called A Porter's Love Song to a Chambermaid. Just, um, I'll do four and then we'll do the verse. I'll sing it all the way through. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Though my position is of low degree And all the others may look down on me I'll go smiling through That's if I had you I am the happiest of troubadours Thinking about you, baby, when I'm massaging floors And at my leisure time I made up this rhyme I will be the oil mop If you'll be the oil Then we both could mingle Every time we toil I would be your washboard If you'll be my tub Think of all those Mondays mm, We can rub-a-dub I will be your shoe brush If you'll be my shoe I'll keep you looking bright, dear And feeling good as new if you'll be my razor, I will be the blade. That's a Porter's love song to a chambermaid.
every time we talk And I'll be the washboard If you'll be the tub Think of all the Mondays We can rub a dub And I will be your shoe brush If you'll be my shoe Keep you looking bright, dear Feeling just good as new If you'll be the window I'll be your window shade That's a porter's love song Yes, yeah, baby To a chambermaid 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 yeah. How about that? <laughs> There's more lyrics to that, too. I, I'll have to write them down. It goes on and on and on. Brooms and mops and all kinds of stuff. Soaps. <laughs> Let's do, let's do Baby Brown. No, it's 105. As you can see, I've, I've made up a, a new book of all of my favorite songs. <laughs> it's a wonderful book to have. <laughs> and I gathered them all. Up. Well, this is book one. I'm working on another one with more of my favorite tunes. Most of these are from the 30s, but not all. 20s, 30s, 40s. And um, this one's called Baby Brown. It's uh, another one recorded by Fats Waller and his... He had a little band called his Rhythm, Fats Waller and his Rhythm. And this was on one of his very first recording sessions. And uh, he didn't write this one either. This is Alex Hill wrote this. Oh, well. I'll give four bars and then an ensemble. OK. you've seen it's never brown on baby brown that neat sweet georgia queen she's sure some jolly friend sir just past 17 there's none in town like baby brown the neat sweet georgia queen say she's cute and pert and got that certain thing you know the rest can't help flirting she makes that curtain ring down on the best always bound to win sir saying what i mean well, there's none in town like Baby Brown, the neat, sweet Georgia queen.
the rest Can't help flirting that makes that curtain ring down on the best She's always bound to win, sir, saying what I mean My money's down on baby brown, the need sweet Georgia queen Thank you. Thanks a bunch. All right. I gotta find the number on this next one. 108. All right, here's one I don't think these guys have done yet. It's called Blue Because of You. It's a sad song. We learned this one on Facebook. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Well, there you have it. Guess I'll do the piano on the top. Yeah, we'll just do piano Good. on the top. Okay. Yeah, something different. And then, sing, <clears throat> and then, then the clarinet, and then oh. I'll sing. Okay. It'll, it'll be different. Yeah. yeah. And last eight with, with you guys. <clears throat> one, two, or one, two, three, three. <laughs> Because of you, broken hearted too, stars appear, night is here, breezes softly sigh, they seem to cry that you're gone. The nightingales above sing their songs of love, but their song seems all wrong, just a melody. Reminding me that you're gone Though I'm alone You seem to haunt me My memory Though I'm alone I seem to feel you Kiss me tenderly How can I go on 
knowing that you're gone what can i say or do lost in loneliness i must confess i'm blue blue because of you you're gone what can i say or do lost in loneliness i must confess that i'm blue because of you there you go yeah all right yeah. that's yeah it's a new one for us uh, first time first time doing it. Actually got a request <clears throat> before we came up here for a tune called The Joint is Jumpin'. The Joint is Jumpin'. Written by Fats Waller and uh, Andy Razoff. And um, this kind of tells the story of a rent party or a Saturday night function as they were variously known. The idea was to, uh, if you had trouble paying the rent, you got to threw a little party and uh, had a little food and booze and a piano player and invited all your friends and they paid a fee at the door and at the end of the night or the next day I should say everybody had a headache and you had your rent that's pretty good and this is uh, yeah it's like a rent party in a song This is uh, another new one for us. <laughs> okay. I'll go far, four bars. <laughs>
say they have a new expression along old Harlem way that tells you when a party is ten times more than gay. They say that things are jumping, leaves not a single doubt. And everything is in full swing when you hear somebody shout. The joint is jumping. I mean, it's jumping. Come in, cats, and grab your hats. And I mean, this joy isn't jumping. Piano stomping, dancers are bumping. This here spot is more than hot. I mean, this joint is jumping. Check your weapons at the door. Be sure and pay your quarter. Burn your leather on the floor. Grab anybody's daughter. The roof is rocking. The neighbors are knocking. We're all bums when the wagon comes. Look out, the joint is jumping. jumping every mose is on his toes i mean this joint is jumping no time for talking it's time for walking now grab a jug and cut the rug i mean this joint is jumping get your pig feet beer and gin there's plenty in the kitchen now who is that that just walked in and look at the way it's twitching yes don't mind the hour cause i'm in power I've got bail if we go to jail. I mean, this joint is jumping. Paul Saro. Good tune. Yeah. Thank you. Skinny Zasaro. Skinny. That's good. Yeah, I like that. I'll, I'll keep that name. Yeah. For some, re for some reason, Fat Waller sounds a lot worse than Fat Swaller. I don't know. <laughs> it does. I, it really does. Oh, let's see. All right. Let's do something. Let's see. One we don't always do. Sweet and slow? Okay, sure. Sweet and slow. We got a request for 149. <laughs> Rock about me to and fro, not too fast. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Okay, I'll do the last four bars. <laughs>
sweet and slow rock a by me to and fro while the band is moaning low honey take your time sweet and slow we ain't got no place to go we ain't going to buffalo no honey take your time You've heard of how the rabbit and the turtle ran a race You've heard of how the rabbit ended up in second place Sweet and slow While these lights are burning low Oh honey, I know we can make it if we take it Sweet and slow are burning low oh honey I know we can make it if we take it sweet and slow thank you that's one we uh, recorded I did a album with these guys of all Fats Waller, well, he didn't write all of them. Things that were associated with Fats, and uh, that was on it. We've also got, by the way, two recordings with us <laughs> that I was promised to show. Um, these CDs, both of them uh, were done for the wonderful Delmark label, jazz label here in town, and it features the full band. Up to scare up, so I don't know if we got any of the Fats ones or not. I might have some in the car. All right, wait, I gotta check the time. Do, do one more? Yeah. Yeah, we'll do one more. We'll do a, a quickie. A few more. Well, there's more to come. <laughs> Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. What would be a good up-tempo? We're going to open the dance floor for this one, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right, we did that one. <laughs> Let's do a, a 101, Abdullah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Here's another one we recorded. It's called Abdullah. <laughs>
Abdullah was the king of Amazula, and he had lived out way out in Bula. Abdullah took a trip to Honolulu, and there he met a pretty little girl named Lula. He was so entranced by the way she danced, got his wife Zambula, hawked his crown and bought her a gown, gave up the throne for Lula. Abdullah took a trip to Honolulu. Now it swings out in a torrid hula hula. Here we go. is so perfect. I can't get over it. It really is. I mean, it really, really is. First of all, God bless you dancers. I finally got someone to crack the ice on that dance floor. Got a whole nother set coming uh, with, uh, with more dancing music, so I hope that, uh, hope that you do uh, take advantage of that. Um, I, I don't want to upstage you guys, but I also know that I'm, it's not a good place for me, so I'm going to stand here and turn both ways. Uh, Paul, this is, uh, I've been a Fats Waller fan forever and ever and ever. And uh, in fact, recently I heard um, on a V-Disc recording, something from the 40s, uh, Fats was interviewed and uh, he kind of summed up how I feel tonight. The interviewer said, Fats, how you doing? And he goes, Ray, if I felt any better, I'd be ashamed of myself. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. And that's kind of how I feel this evening. <laughs> um, you mm -hmm. really, really have that style down and it really is a distinctive style. Um, how do, doesn't it? Yay. I mean, you really... <laughs> it's great. Yeah, um, how did that come about? I mean, what, what, what drew you to his music? I mean, it's, it's very infectious, very easy to love, but I mean, what brought you to that specifically to learn? Well, um, as a kid, I started with Ragtime, Scott Joplin, mm -hmm. and was the, that was really the piano music that made me interested in the piano, because before that, it was just, you know, lessons. Right. 
that stuff. I didn't, yeah. I didn't like any of that. But um, as soon as I discovered the ragtime and, and all the sheet music had been repl- and the, well, the Sting, the movie came out oh, first right, right, when right. I was a, just starting piano lessons, and my mother bought the soundtrack. Mm. So that's how I heard it in the first place. Who was, played that on the soundtrack? Was that like uh, uh, Marvin Joshua Hamlish? Oh, Marvin Hamlish, right? Yeah, right, right, he right, won right, the right. big. He got the Academy yeah, Award. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Um, but then, and, and my mother also played piano, so she also bought the music books, ah. and I, that's how I started learning the rags. Mm-hmm. And but I didn't get into Fats Waller until really until college. I I played ragtime all the way through high school. U.B. Blake. Yeah. And James Scott and all those guys. Yeah. Right. But Fats, I, I discovered through the records. Uh, yeah. I started getting his, and I, well, I started reading biographies on my favorite guys, like U.B. Blake, for instance, talks about Fats yeah. and James P. And I'm like, well, I got to hear these guys. And once I went, started going to college in Chicago, I, I grew up mostly in Galesburg, Illinois, and way before the internet. I mean, you couldn't just go down to your local record store and find records by right, these guys. Right, right, exactly. I mean, I had to make a special trip up to Chicago to find anything. So when I started going to school here, I, I, I went to Rose Records and yep. Jazz Record Martin bought all the stride piano in sight. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> in fact, you know, the music just sort of tumbled out of him. It seemed so effortless, and he would have complete conversations while his, you know, both appendages are just like flying. It's really just kind of phenomenal. How, how seemingly yeah. easy it was for him. And I know that, I mean, obviously, nothing comes that easy to anybody, I suppose, but, uh, uh, but he was uh, extraordinarily gifted and, and yeah. so outwardly happy. I, you know, I, I assume he, he wasn't always that way, but certainly that was the face he put on yeah. it. And I, yeah. I always thought it was just such a great way to play jazz piano. I was so, I'm, as I got older, I was just so surprised that so few people did it. Because right. It, it's a, it's a, you can play almost any song in that style and uh-huh. swings like crazy. Right. M- right. Lots of melody, tons of rhythm. You can have a rhythm section. You don't need a rhythm section. It's, it's right. right. But it's relatively rare. I you know I also didn't realize until your first song that this is the lineup for Fats Waller and his rhythm, isn't it? It was yes. It, it's, it was it was uh, trumpet. Was there a trumpet in uh, minus always? the trumpet and also minus the guitar? <clears throat> Al Casey. Really. Very important. I didn't chunk chunk chunk. Yeah. <laughs> For some reason, when, when you first started, I thought, that's, that's it. I guess maybe it was there. And I've always said Razaf, but it's not. It's, what is it? What did you say? I, I always say Razaf, but I'm Razaf. not sure. Well, you say potato, <laughs> you know. Yeah. I'll say John Otto. <laughs> 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 um, but, uh, but certainly the reeds figured prominently in that, in that, that, uh, that band. So this, is a, this does have a real... <laughs> Uh, you know, it harkens back really to that sound that that that's cultivated. Um, I'd like to talk for a second about this piano. The piano does not live here. It arrived here with the band this evening. So, um, and uh, it's only because we do have a working uh, lift here that they were able to get the piano in. But um, can you tell me how you got the piano here? I know the answer to this question. Oh, just in the car. I just slide it in the back of the car. But what kind of car? <laughs> the the Prius. <laughs> <laughs> you believe that? <laughs> Just <Yeah. laughs> it barely fits. Wow. It fits. Wow. Actually, actually, it's a good fit, actually. It, yeah, you can c- come check us out when we load out. <laughs> or help. Yeah, help that's a, help yeah, right. that's a, Don't just stand there. That's the last part something. of the show. <laughs> yeah, stick around yeah, for the second set, set really. <laughs> um... So the Fat Babies as a group. So so the, so this 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 is obviously a subgroup of the Fat Babies, and you are a somewhat regular, or or are you a regular member of the Fat Babies? Yes, a regular member. And okay. here I'll pass a mic over to yeah, okay, to Bo. No, no, he's the the fabulous leader of the Fat Babies. Fats, by the way, always had the, they 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 said he had the, the sledgehammer left hand, and I, the one the one legend I remember about Fats, and I, who knows if it's true, but. He, uh, a story about Fats playing one of these rent parties, and then afterwards, the morning after, they were found piano hammers on the floor. Oh. Just like blowing them right out of the piano. Because they would take the front off the piano so you could hear it better. And so you'd, you know, you'd see those hammers going. That's what I see. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, Bo, uh, this is a subgroup of the Fat Babies, which um, plays regularly at the Green Mill and the Honky Tonk Barbecue, which is right next to, th- next to Thalia Hall, right? Mm-hmm which I didn't know until we went downtown to see a show at Thalia Hall. I went, oh my god, there's a honky-tonk barbecue. 
It looks like a great place, although I, I, it was closed when we, uh, when we were walking by, so I couldn't could get in there. But um, So you guys have been um, around for, for quite a while. You don't usually get this far north, right? But uh, Yeah, and we, we've been playing the, uh, the Honky Tonk for, f I think, four years in October. That was every, our Sunday? every Sunday? Every mm -hmm. Sunday, 8 to 11. So if you're ever down there, come check us out. Yeah. And uh, every Tuesday at the Green Mill, 9 to 1. Which is where I first saw and heard them uh, live, and uh, oh my gosh, it's really something. Let me tell you that that place is packed, and the dance floor is packed. You have to kind of fight your way to the to the front. It's really it's quite a scene down there. Um, hint, Alex, hint. Oh, go ahead. No. What were you going to say? <laughs> dance floor is packed. Hint, hint. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> it's, it's really, and it's uh, it's even a larger dance floor than this, so there's almost no excuse. <laughs> I, right. Honey, I'm playing. Please, I would. Please take her up on it. It's my <laughs> take her up on it because this is my wife speaking. So I'm going to be in really big trouble if she doesn't get to get up and dance. <laughs> Alex, we were talking earlier about about this drum kit. So this is a more um, uh, 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 accurate to the era drum kit than a, than a standard drum kit. And could you just speak a little bit about what the what the differences are between? that between this and what a, a drummer would typically use yeah. today? Sure. I guess so. Thank you. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, it, uh, it, it differs in certain ways, I guess. Uh, the most obvious difference is that there's no hi-hat, which is something that sort of became more in vogue in the late 30s and 40s and has remained on the drum set. And the hi-hat is a thing with two cymbals, that, two cymbals. That, that move back and forth or, or up and down on each other with a pedal. Via a foot pedal, yeah. And... Um, uh, there were a lot of drummers in the 20s, you know, the, the drum set existed as, a, as, as some sort of this amorphous thing. It didn't really have a, a, a defined, there wasn't a defined, you know, you, you put your, your, your snare drum here and your bass drum there, and it, that all kind of developed mostly in the late 30s and 40s, and it's, it's remained pretty consistent to today. But if you go before that, um, it was kind of the Wild West. Guys put all kinds of strange stuff on their drum set. It was often, you know, borrowed from more orchestral percussion, so you'll see old 20s drum setups with... With, with a lot of wood blocks and toys and ratchets and gongs and cymbals and you know things you might find more in like a, an opera pit mm -hmm. orchestra or something or like that. Almost. Or yeah, yeah, yeah you right, might say really? this. some of them are kind of circus-like. Anyway, so it's 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 been kind of fun for me going back and listening to this old music and and and, and trying out some some older you know older setups because it it influences the way you play. And yeah, uh, yeah, I mean almost your physicality looks at I mean you guys uh, all uh, and and whether or not it's cultivated it, it you really look it looks like we're looking back in time um, which is really so fantastic. Um and are any of the pieces of your drum kit actual like antiques? Yeah, yeah. Uh well, there it's a mishmash. Uh uh the 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 bass drums from probably World War 2 era bass drum. The uh -huh. oldest thing I have is probably this this china symbol which really? is from the from the, the best as I'm able to figure out early 20s, yeah. So uh you can you can, you know, find this stuff around. It's uh it's it's just kind of, you know, it, it is neat when you find something that has a bunch of years on it to play yeah. and, and hear what it sounds like and they do sound different, you know. Yeah. Many many years of cigarette the uh, you know tar and, and yeah, right, right. Bar, exactly. bar gigs kind of if that accrued. symbol could talk yeah exactly <laughs> and it, it's uh, it's cool yeah. you don't know the history of any of these I mean where they where they literally came I don't know the specific history yeah. no it, it didn't come through some you know like no no this is history. as I say I just kind of you know I, I've kind of amassed bits and pieces here and there and I just have attached them to my drum set as I as I like them which I think is probably in the spirit of the original guys yeah, right, right. they weren't thinking, like, that way. They they weren't thinking like as a kid cool. they were like I like the way this thing sounds I'm gonna drill a hole and stick it here <laughs> and then I'll play that for a while you know? yeah 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 fantastic John when you are moving back and forth between um, clarinet and uh, an alto are you uh, is there a, a rhyme or reason to that or is there I mean are there specific songs that are um, typically played on one or the other that you that you does that make the choice for you, or I mean, I, sometimes I see you switching it within a tune. Mm -hmm. Is it just just because that's what you're feeling, or is it just because, or or for, is there is there historically some of the records had those, or what? Variety. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I like going back and forth. I, I prefer the clarinet, so I play that the most. Uh huh. And um, I uh, <clears throat> I love the I love to go back and forth and change it up and play melodies. Depends on the tune. If it's more of a '40s tune, maybe more saxophone mm. and. Mm -hmm. Just depends on the song. Yeah, that kind of makes and the uh, recordings that I'm familiar with. Right. Um, I almost wish I'd brought my tenor tonight because a lot of the uh, Fat Swaller and his yeah, buddies sure, sure. that use tenor. tenor. So next time. Yeah, yeah. 
Wow, well, uh, equally adept at both, and it's so great to, to hear that. And it's nice to have the change of color, you know, within a tune yeah. even sometimes. And just oh, have thanks. a switch up. It's, it's, uh, it's almost like getting an extra, an extra player. So remember that when you divvy up the pay. <laughs> yeah, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I got a lot of different stuff here. That's right. Alex got, has six or seven or eight things over there. <laughs> I win. Sorry I brought it up. <laughs> yeah, but... But who brought the piano? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, does anybody have any questions? Any particular questions? We just love it. Well, <clears throat> thank you. I, that, uh, I hope that's unanimous. I am so crazy. You know, I, you just, and I, I will confess, I hear this music and it makes me at once really happy and it moves me. I mean, just because it throws me right back to the stuff that, that I, as a kid, I told a story earlier, but... Um, you know, I, I, I was kind of drawn to this earlier music. The, the more I got deeper into jazz, the more I wanted to find out who influenced whom and, and, uh, and go backwards further and further. And, and, uh, and when you hear some of this early stuff and the passion that they played it with, and that's what I love about this is that there is, it's not, they're not just playing the tunes, they're playing with real passion, and that, that comes out. Yeah, Neil. Yeah, I'm curious to hear names of other composers in the 20s. Other composers in the 20s? Uh, uh, well, 20s and 30s, maybe? 20s and 30s. Uh -huh. Oh, oh that, that, that may have influenced, like, like James P. Johnson influenced Fats, or, or composers that influence these players? Well, what other composers you're playing music of, or is it just Fats? Oh, 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 this oh, evening. Wrote more than Fats. Yeah, yeah, I thought so. Yeah. Where'd that mic go? So, oh. <laughs> Wait, I got both mics. This is <laughs> <laughs> That's probably a good question. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, uh, oh, oh. You know more names of composers. You touched it last. Oh. <laughs> Not necessarily. <laughs> well, there's just uh, yeah, Berlin, yeah, Berlin right. Gershwin, Alex Hill. Uh, Alex Hill, right? Mm -hmm. You hold the mic, and we'll tell you what this Al is. <laughs> Alex Hill was a uh, a band leader on the South Side. He was a piano player, band leader, and Alex arranger, Hill. and uh, he played with uh, uh, Jabo Smith. Made mm, some records sure. on Vocalion. Wonderful uh, pianist, and uh, I think he died. I think he died in the forties. He died young. Yeah, yeah. Julie Roll Morton, yeah. another Chicagoan. Thank you, Bo. He's a Chicagoan for a while. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Ellington. Yeah, was, there's, was writing there's then. hundreds, hundreds. Um, yeah. Black and white, all pop yeah. music and theater and um, the radio and movies, it all interrelated at one time with uh, great music and composers and, and it, pop music. And a lot of that music, when you hear it now, it's, it sounds so, uh, uh, it, it, if you just, on a glance, it sounds almost like cartoon music or something. When you listen to it, you go, oh my god, that's incredible <laughs> stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that yes, yes ma'am. Yeah. That is such a wonderful music, and that's what we really love, love, love. And I have so many European fans coming to Chicago, uh -huh. and they always expect that, I think, that kind of music. <laughs> Yes. Oh. These kids. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I like to know where they play every single day. Well, I'm not giving out home phone numbers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Aren't they fantastic? I know. I know. So every Sunday. Put on that list. I know. I know. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, they all are very similar in my age. <laughs> well, so we love that. Yeah, love well, that. I do too. I do too. And, um, you know, I've had that so many years of the last four years where people, we went to every jazz place in Chicago. And sometimes you did it very well, and sometimes you did it we awful. Yeah, well, <laughs> You know, one of the things that, uh, I mean, Duke Ellington famously said there are two kinds of music, good music and the other kind. And, um, and jazz is a huge, j jazz is a huge boat. And there's, you know, it, it, under, the, under the banner of jazz is a lot of stuff. In fact, these posters that are up behind these guys are so, ana they're so anachronistic because these guys were children if they were even alive during, during when one of the music. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so I, I, I do uh, agree with you. It's, it's a, there's a huge, wide variety for lots of different tastes. But I got to say, when it's good, it's good, and there's no denying it. And these guys are are the best. They're just yeah. A, yeah yes, sir. Uh, following up on that same question, tell us a story of the Bedlam. How, how did you 
Ah, the fat boy. That's a really great question. We talked about that a little bit the last time you were here, but but uh, should, go ahead. You should tell him. Here. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Just do that one. Yeah. The story of the fat babies. Is that what you said? Or the fat boys. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's an 80s rap band, right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I remember them. <laughs> it's, been, it's been so long since I read that biography. I don't remember. <laughs> the story of you guys. Yeah. Somebody referred to this band as Fat Baby Slim. <laughs> oh, no. Anyway. The, uh, the story of the Fat Babies. Uh, well, basically, um, we kind of all met. Alex and I have been playing together for a long time. Well, since I moved to town, which is about eight or nine years ago from, from Texas. And um, I've sort of always wanted to start a band that played this kind of music. And, uh, and I guess... I'll make it a very short story, but uh, I've, I've been telling Alex forever, man, I really want to do this, it'd be so great, but there's nobody that can play this stuff. And he was playing a gig with a band called the Alan Gresick Orchestra, and John was in that group for a long time, and our cornetist, Andy Shum, was in that group for a long time. And uh, I remember Alex saying, man, I met these two guys, and I think they're the guys for the band. And so I went out, I, I uh, introduced myself, and uh, we ended up at playing together, jamming at the Green Mill maybe a, a few weeks later than that. And, uh, and then uh, Andy introduced me to Paul, who he'd known from Champagne. And then uh, we, I met Jake when he was touring through town with a band from New York. And anyway, long story short, we all ended up getting together and playing. And what I thought originally was going to be, you know, maybe a trio that played at a bar in front of nobody ended up, like, uh, within weeks becoming a seven-piece band. Wow. And... Uh, and that's it. It's kind of it's unique that there aren't there aren't people that can really play this kind of stuff. And we do a lot of arrangements, and so there's a lot of reading normally on on the regular gigs. And it's kind of like these are the only seven guys in town that can really play in this band. So, <laughs> oh. you clap, but it makes it really hard when someone can't make it. <laughs> but anyway, that that that's that's a short story. Well, when Paul can't make it, I'd love to be called, but that would be a huge mistake. <laughs> um, well, this is fantastic. And folks, uh, do you guys uh, want to take a break now? And then, uh, yeah, yeah, all right. Please. So, <laughs> so they're, gonna, they're gonna take a short break, but please do stick around and please, please dance, please dance, dance. All right, all right. <laughs> okay, so please stay and thank you, thank you, thank you so much for coming. Come back next week is gonna, we, every week is something a little bit different. It's all good. Thanks very much, folks. Yeah.
Folks, thanks so much for sticking around. And before uh, uh, the rest of the band gets up here, Paul is uh, gonna play a piece by himself. So uh, thanks again for coming out and supporting live music here in Evanston. And, um, and thanks so much for the Fat Babies for making it such a special night. And here's Paul. Thank you. Thank you to something. Tune by Jelly Roll Morton called the Whining Boy Blues. And this is done at the three in the morning tempo. <laughs> And shake it like sweet Stephen chains. Mmm, whining boy, don't deny my loving name. Mama, mama, take a look at sis. Mama, mama. Take a look at sis. Mm -hmm. Look at sis. Mama, mama, take a look at sis. She's outside on the levee doing the double twist. <laughs> Whining boy, now don't deny my name. I swore I'd never roam alone. 
but I'm the whining boy. And I said, don't deny my name. Thank you. The whining boy blues. We'll get the guys back up here. I've spent a lot of time over the last oh, eight years or so, I think, down in Champaign, Illinois. It's a long story how I ended up down there. But playing piano in a saloon called the Blind Pig. And those are the kind of tunes I like to do there. It's just a, just a beer bar with a, a place I could stick a piano and and work on my material, you know. And so I've, I've gotten really used to playing saloon piano, but I'm nice and comfortable. But those kind of tunes work real well. That was by Jelly Roll Morton, which is um, one of my heroes, definitely, and I haven't played any of his stuff up until then. We should try... Sure, let's do that. You want to do that now? We're going to do the tune. It's almost, almost like an unofficial theme. Is this the theme of the... The band? What's the theme of the Salty Dogs? Yeah, it probably is. I think that's, that's a plenty. We kind of st we stole their the theme. Salty Dogs jazz band? <laughs> Besides John? Uh, Hello? Check, check. Joey does. Well, I know at least three or four of you are, and you're just shutting up. <laughs> Anyway, this is a theme song of a, one of our favorite bands, a local group called the Salty Dogs. It's called That's a Plenty.
about those dancers. That's John Otto on the clarinet, ladies and gentlemen. I should remind everyone that we do have some CDs for sale if you like what you hear. And don't worry, don't worry about buying too many. We brought a lot of them, we brought boxes of them. We all rode separately so we could fit them in the cars. And yes, we do have a, a website. Apparently there were some inquiries. Thefatbabies.com. Yeah. How about it? Yeah. <laughs> We're going to feature John on another tune here. This is called Georgia Cabin. 121. Who wrote this, Paul? Sidney Bechet wrote this, the great sap, uh, clarinet soprano sax player. He wrote really nice melodies.
Mm -hmm. All right, here's a going back to Fats Waller for one more of his tunes. This is a pretty obscure one that he wrote called Old Granddad. And I don't think he was talking about family here. <laughs> Although he wears glasses, he mixes with the classes of today. Yes, today. Nice, gentle, and kind, but there's always one thing I'll keep on my mind. Who's the one that I adore, though he beats me to the floor? Old Granddad. He's my old granddad. He's my pappy's pappy, who's the one that knows the tricks? But when I'm down, he gives me more kicks. Old Granddad, he's my old granddad. He's my uncle's father. All my cousins, nieces, nephews, no old grand's the man. You must act right, you must live right. If you want to meet him in the promised land, well, look at here, it's getting late. Oh, he's gonna meet me out by the gate, that granddad. My old granddad. Cousins, nieces, nephews, no old grand's the man. You must act right, you must do right if you want to meet him in the promised land. Well, look at here, it's getting late. Bet you he's waiting by the gate. Oh, granddad, he's my old granddad. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. All right, we got, wow, it's going by so fast. We've got time for one more here. Uh, one more quickie, quickie. We're <laughs> I know. I, oh, man, let's find a good tempo thing. And then we're all going to move the piano out. Yeah, let's do that. Thanks for your help. Two more? Two more? We could do two more. All right, let's do. <laughs> That's kind of an encore. That's <laughs> a preemptive encore. <laughs> This one, one may go really badly, and then you don't want another. Uh, 133. 133. I'm crazy about my baby. I 
Okay. All right, this is called I'm Crazy About My Baby and My Baby's Crazy About Me. And it's, it's got a verse and everything. You'll love it. <laughs> Do a C minor vamp at the top and then mm -hmm. sing it through. Okay. I'm walking, walking on air, cause I left all my blue days behind. I've learned how to care. Love, really love on my mind I'm the world's most happy creature Tell me what can worry be I'm crazy about my baby Baby's crazy about me This Cupid was a teacher That's the reason we agree That I'm crazy about my baby Baby's crazy about me Parson, get that book out Hold it in your hand Keep a steady look out You can understand He and she crazy about my baby and my baby crazy about me What can worry me? Crazy about my baby. Baby's crazy about me. Mm, Mr. Cupid's a teacher. That's the reason we agree. I'm crazy about my baby, and my baby's crazy about me. Pause and get that book. Hold it in your hand. Keep a steady look out. You can understand. We're in one combination. Perfect and she. I'm crazy about my baby. Yeah, thanks everybody for coming out. This is great. <laughs> and uh, coming out to listen. And we're going to do another tune here. Let's see. Oh, this is. Uh... Oh, this is a good tune. You'll love this. This is, um... this is from uh, another Fats Waller tune. <laughs> this book's a little Fats Waller heavy because um, I had all these tunes ready to go and they all made it in here. But this one is 
from, uh, is more obscure, it's from uh, Fats' very last Broadway musical that he wrote in 1943, just before he passed away in December of 43. And the, the show was called Early to Bed, and it had a number of, of I think, his very best songs in it, quite a few that um, were subsequently forgotten. It, it was wartime, and there was also a recording band going on. There was a uh, some kind of a, a union thing going on. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, that's right. So they never got recorded with his band. There were tunes like um, You're Only Slightly Less Than Wonderful. <laughs> and uh, There's a Gal in My Life. <laughs> and th th this was uh, one of the tunes from the show. It's called This Is So Nice, It Must Be Illegal. So here we go. Very good. Good. It must be illegal Needing you once more Feeling so good It could be against the law This is an age which curbs our pleasures Who knows what's in store This is so nice There must be a hidden flaw Say you're so photogenic, sculptural and scenic. All those guys fall in flocks. Noting your attractions, Congress might take action. Keep you underground at Fort Knox. Quick, let us kiss before it's illicit. It could happen here. This is so nice, it must be illegal, dear. So photogenic, sculptural and scenic, all those guys fall in flocks. Noting your attractions, Congress might take action and keep you underground at Fort Knox. Quick, let us kiss before it's illicit. It could happen here.
Thanks so much. Thank you. Uh, the Fat Babies, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. This was just, just perfect. And thanks to the, all the dancers, and uh, thanks to all of you for coming out again and supporting live music right here in our neighborhood. It is, uh, it uh, really feels great. So, and uh, come back, come back. There's lots of stuff coming up, um, but uh, but for right now, thank you to you guys. And really, what a what a great night. What a great night. Hope to see you back here again soon. And go see the Fat Babies again at the, the Green Mill and the Honk and Honk Barbecue. And buy some CDs if you want. And help with the piano.